Okay, I got myself flipped back around again. Sorry about uh, the reflipping and the flipping and all that stuff, but I think I got myself correct. Uh, so the, the next couple things I want to do. Um, let's make sure I got everything set up here right. Uh, I've got a section done now, and I want to do uh, elevations. I want to take a look at those a little bit. So let me look at this back elevation to start. Uh, sorry, front elevation, I mean. Um, so here we go. There's this guy, and I'm going to just do this so I can see both of what's going on. Over here. There's this guy. And this is kind of what I want to get to, right? So I, I want to do some of this um, horizontal siding and some spots and some trim. Uh, and I give myself some line weights. And I also want to be able to draw these tapers. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to call this good enough. And I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to right click, go to elevation settings, and under general, the status, I'm going to, I'm going to put status as drawing and hit OK. So what this does now is it detaches it from the model and what I can work with are lines. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to the fill tool and hit control A and delete all the fills because there are fills that come in with the model and it makes it really confusing. Uh, but now I can start to draw lines so I can do take my line tool um, uh, and I can, for example, draw in this little taper that happens here. And then I can trim the other lines along with that. This looks like it comes out flush and then straight up. And then I can trim these lines back and get those to go away. And so on and so forth. I can take uh, and draw these little lines. And so what I tend to do is I draw in all the trim first. trim line goes all the way across, doesn't it? And let's see, it's a five-quarter smart side that just goes up to the... Looks like it just sort of lines up with that, right? And there's another line below it. It's a little trim line. Something like that. Um, there's very likely some trim around the windows, so I'm going to just... Uh, I'll show you a little trick here. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then I'm going to take these three lines and uh, I'm going to use the offset tool, which is not over here. So I go to edit, reshape, offset. Click on an edge, come out, and then uh, I'll do one. Let's see, I'm going to guess it's probably a two and a half inch trim. I got to do that again. Because I didn't do it as a copy. Something like that. Uh, there's little residual bits within uh, the model that I need to clean up some of these missing lines. Um, this is a fixed window, so I need to get rid of its swing line, which I didn't have correct before. And I can do that kind of stuff. Um, Let's see, I also need to do some trim around this guy, which looks like it. Uh, I'm actually going to do that as a polyline. Do it like this. Polylines are nice in these situations too, because now I can take this as a polyline and I can offset an edge. So I'll offset that. Looks like it's maybe 8 inches. And then offset it that way. It looks like it's more, you know, maybe just an inch and a half. And then the 
then there's a skirt board there that uh, comes in. It looks like it aligns with the floor. The porch floor, I should say. You can model all these things too. It's just very labor intensive and I don't recommend it. I don't think you get uh, the kind of uh, flexibility that you're trying to get when you draw elevations. I think part of what's uh, draw about elevations, designing an elevation, is it is sort of a graphic design exercise in some ways. Certainly the way Eric does his elevations is very much uh, a graphic. Um, so I would choose to do it that way. Uh, looks like I need to pull this guy down and trim. This comes across like this. It goes across like that. There's another line that comes over here and so on. So once you get some of the basic trim lines in like this, there's no line here, is there? Um, I've got to taper this guy. that uh, and this one as well should make sure I'm doing all these the same I'm not sure I am actually so it's probably better if instead of doing that I probably what I should have done is taken this and just dragged a copy down there to make sure that those two are exactly the same uh, so now that I've got these areas now I can start to use my fill tool I've got all these options for fill, and I've got vertical siding and all these other things. Uh, I'm going to go to the plank floor. I know it's weird, but I'm going to go to the plank floor. I'm going to set the pen at 93, and then I'm going to uh, hold down the uh, space bar to give myself a magic wand, and uh, I'm going to choose a layer for this thing. Put it, let's do it on the ArchiCAD layer. And there you can see what happens is it fills that spot, so I'll do it over here fills that spot over here no region found hmm. now there's a region found okay um, and we can see some of these spots that goes through the window because we didn't quite have lines there yet um, pretty easy to do if you uh, select the the fill just like what we did with um, with slabs you can do the same thing you can just draw a box and it cuts a hole in the fill a hole in the fill. Uh, you can also use the fill tool in elevations to draw your trim for you. So like in these cases with these two guys, what I might do is come up here and give it a line. I'll give it a solid line like that. And then I can just come in here and uh, pull the offset that edge an inch and a half. Pull it up. down and you can see it's actually making those trim lines for me. Ooh, that's too heavy of a line. Set that to be 93. Same with this guy. Set that to be 93. I usually use 93 and 100, but you, somewhere in between sometimes I'll set other pen uh, weights. If you want other pen colors, they're in here, but I would, again, not suggest it. Um, yeah, and then so then and then up here it looks like there's paneling that uh, happens. So we just need to do that as line work. Um, my guess is it comes over four feet. I'm dragging a copy, it. and I can do it like that. The other thing I can do is if I want to make multiple copies, because I can, I'm guessing that all of these are four feet across from each other. Um, what I can do is I can take. Uh, a line like this and hit control U which makes multiples I can make three in an increment and that's four feet and there they are 
And then with the line tool active, I can, well, I don't need this one, right? Oops, come on. I don't need that guy. With the line tool active, there it is, I can alt click on that and it trims it to there. And then I can alt click on that and it trims it to there. And then I can delete those two lines. So that's how we do the elevation. Then, then what, do you, what you want to do is a heavy outline. So I want to go to my probably 99, something like that, and do a nice heavy outline around the most forward part of the building. You can see Eric sort of did his, or had his done sort of in sections of darkness, which you could do as well. But really, we just want to have that act as sort of a graphic. It might be nice since this does jut out really far to really express that clearly. And probably inside here too where this uh, porch comes inside like that. And then we want to do a really good ground line. And with the ground line, I go down to this little sketchy line or this line, which is a stone line, whichever one looks good. Um, and I will just kind of retrace whoops, the, the line, that sight line that's there. Ooh, yeah, we don't want to use that line. Let's go to the ground line like that. And there's our elevation. We're done. So I'll come back and we'll talk through how to do that with a section and how to add final notes.